Hi everyone, Larry Delano here again. We've come to the end of the short forms and the discussion of those for the time being. I thought at this point we would move into looking at each of the wazas within Okinawa Te and breaking them down, looking at their uses, what are they teaching, how can they be deployed, because the idea of practicing applications is to generate in yourself a set of motions that can be compiled between those motions uh, to use at a moment's notice so that if you were attacked you could use what is appropriate at that moment in time to meet that attack so you learn some applications you practice those applications hopefully over a wide enough uh, a wide enough area of possible attacks that you have a good repertoire of response the same thing with forms. Forms are what I say are taught on focus flow. flow. In, in the case of Okinawa Te, some, some styles or systems or organizations teach a series of applications put together to form a waza. Okinawa Te's forms uh, follow focus flow, flow. It's how one motion flows into another, not necessarily how it would be used in a specific application or series of motions for a specific response to an attack. They're to create you know, balance and uh, capability in executing strikes and parries and moves and, and steps and things like that uh, overall, like an exercise uh, in those motions. Um, so I can say more about the forms later, but the idea is that it's a practice over a compound set of motions. The wazas are more directed at a specific attack with a specific response, which you would believe to be probably not good in a random self-defense situation. But again, training your body to respond to categories of attacks, and you can pick and choose those motions. So there's, there's a list of them that I compiled many, many years ago when I was younger, and I'm going to post that on Facebook. Uh, they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, out into the 50s, 60s, something like that. So um, I'll post those and then start going through them one by one, looking at how it was practiced initially, what it consists of, what you can do with it. Um, and feel free to uh, comment on these things as we go. Maybe we can all learn something. Um, in the way I've compiled them now, they used to just be a series of one to whatever the number was. Um, now I've, I've compiled them into groups like blocking, moving, trapping, you know, things like this. So that I've got different uh, categories of them. But in the first one, just to start with the example, is waza number one, which is what starts from this position here and pulls back here. Uh, the defender would pull back, the attacker would step in with that motion and then execute the attack and then the defender would complete the defense. These are done, in a lot of ways, these are done very impractical because it's two-staged. Uh, it's not moving around. It's not utilizing what happens when a person gets hit and how they move, um, which, is, which is really ineffective when you're practicing. You need to practice with that idea of what if you got hit, what if they got hit, uh, how can you respond, how can you vary. Uh, but there are a set of circumstances within each one that they're attempting to teach you something. They, first of all, this position here, uh, Mike Christine and I have talked a lot about this position. It would be very impractical to take this position in front of someone, um, put your hand extremely at risk, right? You could come under or over, that could grab your arm, knock it aside, attack you, things like that. But as we saw, you could use it as a lost leader, right? You put it out here, and if a person goes to grab it, right, you could attack them. You could attack them. You could attack them. Right, so you could attack them, okay? So it could be used that way to engage someone, but to take a position as if you're gonna spar with someone in a self-defense situation isn't really the most practical thing to do. But in a school organization, where you're organizing people to do something, that's a method to take. Just like assuming this position in a line in class organizes everybody, it gets positions around everybody so no one gets hit by someone else. In this position here, which is the bowing position Okinawa Te uses, your hands are in this crescent position. So it's a training method to train your hands to be in this position. 
the reason these circle are training exercises for these motions here. Um, but, and when you pull back in the double tap, we're seeing this used as a double tap feature in using it against an attack. Um, so when we look at this drawback here, we come into this position. But let's look at it from more of a, a natural ready position, not standing like this, but standing here, which is like a high modified, what we call slight 45 position with feet. Uh, the first waza, number one, uses an upward motion and an inward motion, a backhand, a punch, another backhand, and then move away. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot going on there, but in general, that's using two blocks initially and then launches the attack from the working hand, okay? The, up here like this, it could be any two blocks like this. It doesn't have to be those, those two blocks, but the way the was was taught it was upward, inward, which is a crossing pattern. Um, in Okinawa Te, the blocks are done based on gates. The first gate is from this position here. If it's squared off like this, upward, downward, outward, inward, low, low. So up, down, out, in, low, low. Up, down, out, in, low, low. Then there's a mid gate and an extended gate. Extended gate being the wrist or knife, hands, palm, heels, things like that. Mid gate being the crescent positions. We'll talk about more when we look at those basic blocking positions. But as we've seen, a block can be used as a strike, a strike can be used as a block. Um, you can aggressively block with the intent of hurting the attacker's hand by, if a person swings in at you and you block hard into their arm, you can certainly hurt their arm and then counterattack them while you're in, in a basic self-defense move like that. In this waza, it's up and in, it's using a vertical motion with a horizontal motion to contain basically a right left punch. So if the guy came right at you, you block one, you block two, and then you counter. The danger in that is a person could overrun you very easily um, by rushing into you. While you're going like this and not countering or countering with the backhand, it, it can slow you down. So one way to look at this would be when the person throws the first motion, you're, you're going into this. You're going into this motion and parrying the strike, and then another one's coming here, but as you roll into it, you go right in to the back knuckle. So it's not a movement that goes one, two, three. It's a motion that goes one, two. See, as it went into the inward block, it went right into the strike. So if you've countered the face and then strike the chest here of the guy and then crack the chest back here, then move away. Now, moving straight away, like most practices are, probably not very good again. You would hit, hit, hit. You might want to go to an angle, right? You might want to go, instead of going boom, 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 if you're right on the guy and his leg's still here, you know, sweeping his leg and throwing him over there. You can see where that comes in is if you use this against the left, right, parry the left, the guy swings him with the right, and if you parry it across, and he's got a left lead leg, you can capture that leg here with sweep and throw him down this way as you strike to the chest. It becomes a little more complex because if I go here with the left and the guy's throwing the right, I've got a huge target here trying to do this. So. If the guy threw a high right, like if he throws a low right, you're not going to be doing this. You'd go to a downward one. Like if I were here, the guy punched my body, I could essentially block this down with a hard shot and right back here. Down, boom. Or I could go down and up and then hit, but that's really slow. I'd want to go here, right in at the guy. Here, right in at the guy. And what do these look like when I'm here? They look like that crescent position that a lot of these are practiced from. So when I'm here hitting, there's that. So the crescent position to practice from is kind of like a pose. It's stop action on, on a striking motion, hitting. See, there's that position here, hitting. So stopping and going from there, like an on guard position, uh, kind of puts you at a disadvantage. It shows the guy where you are. Unless, like I said, you're using it as a lost lead, letting the guy come after it. So, again, we look at this position here. We've got strike, strike, strike. This is using 
expansion, contraction, expansion in here. So I hit, hit, hit. And these have to happen very quickly. So if I were here and the guy threw a left jab, let's say, and I went here with the inward block, I could use this motion. Boom! Right in here at the end. One high, one chest, boom. So you got, you're hitting my face, you're hitting down in here, and then you're cracking the chest. So face, like solar plexus, chest, boom. And then move away. Or you can continue the attack once you're in, how well you fit the guy. Like I said, it can be used with different blocks. It can be used up and in, like it's practiced. But again, up and in, done in a very static motion like that, creates um, an idea that somebody's not going to work very good. Let's say if I were to forget the upward and the guy threw a right and I blocked the right with that inward block like that, notice how it's part of a circle. These are all done in like a square pattern like this, but they're all within a circle right here. So if the guy threw the, that right, I blocked here, I could come right over it with the, this one, hit him in the ribs right here, hit him back again here, and maybe then spin out from the guy. Uh, you could even use it against a kick. If I were here, and the guy threw a front kick and I parried his side, I could come right back with this. Boom, 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 move away. So it's using that three strike sequence to do that. We're using vertical, boom, vertical. You could institute other strikes in there if you want to hear, right? It could be a palm heel, back again. So if I poke to the eyes, palm heel the chest, chop to the neck, poke the eyes, palm heel, hit the neck. So you could institute different strikes, but the motion is basic out, in, out, out, in, out. So you're using that natural part of the body and your hips to hit. Don't, don't hit them real softly here. When, when you come off this motion here, that motion's got to be boom, right in there and it comes rapid fire. Like you're in here, it goes boom, right in there. So it's got to be hit, 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 and then get out of there. Hit, 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 get out of there. Or if you're in there, ram your knees in and take off to this side. You don't have to go back. Boom, boom, boom. If the guy's still standing there, knee him here and move out. Or boom, boom, boom. He's still standing. Boom. Push him. Shove him out of the way. Um, if you come around the side, boom, 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 and you're in back here, and the guy's still in back, you can grab his back. You can grab his back and throw him aside or pull him backwards from that motion. So those are motions that could be adapted that way. They're uh, using a reverse strike, but they're using this front hand to get the action going. Kind of like if you're caught off guard, like if I were here and somebody threw something, I went here like this, and then the guy came with the other attack here. I blocked this, but I'm going in. Then I hit him in here. So, again, take advantage of your, remember the surprise element. Uh, you're not the attacker, so you typically don't have the surprise. Your surprise is the attacker doesn't think you're gonna do anything. So they go to attack you. The guy reach out and grab my shoulder, and I knock it off my shoulder, and here I'm open, so he throws a punch. Here when I go in, well, I'm not gonna stand here like a target on it. I'm here, here, or here, whichever place I am here. I'm gonna move in on the next one, boom. And it's gonna be a hard strike to that guy's arm. And right back into it. So when it rolls here, right in. Rolls here, right in. Don't, no hesitation. Boom, boom, as it twists in, twists it in. Here, here, as you move across. Here, here, these motions in here. Here, here, as I'm moving out. And don't, don't stay a target. When you're using these blocking motions now to move into attacks, if you're using kicks or punches, not even that motion. Try to avoid being the target here. The guy throws and you're standing here, you try to parry it. Trying to parry a strong strike is very difficult. If you're here like this and the guy throws, you could pass it, right, and then come in. So I'm here like this, and the guy throws a strong punch, I pass it, then I come right back in with these motions here. No hesitation, boom, boom, boom. Um, the, it could be a left, and this time you come in, block hard, one, two, three. Use your strike to stop him so the other strike isn't coming. And in a frontal attack, I just hit him in the head, you hit him here, and then this one right, right to the chest to crack the chest right there. Um, again, you can use that motion in many different ways with different strikes. Vary it, move around, think about it coming off a kick. Um, think about the left side versus the right side. You know, against the left right versus the right left. You know, think about all those things. But, okay, that's the beginning of our look at Waza 
and how we might. And we, we'll come back as we see elements of this that show up in other waza. We'll bring those back with the idea of merging these together into methods that you could use to defend yourself. Thank you very much.